Well, good morning. I don't think we can get any more people in this front row. It looks like the penalty box at a Flyers game. We are in the second week of our current message series. And we began last week reflecting on secrets. And there is something irresistible about a secret. Just the word secret, we said, gets our attention and fuels our desire to learn more. And we're interested in a secret even if it doesn't have a big impact on our lives, even if it's not relevant in our lives, or even if it's not relevant. Secrets create a tension in us, something to resolve. They stir our curiosity. They motivate us to listen and to learn. And we keep secrets because they contain sensitive information that, that we're not comfortable sharing. Or even more basically, information <clears throat> that is nobody else's business. Sometimes it's just prudent to keep a secret. It's strategic to do so as well. You keep something secret because it's not yet time to reveal it. We often keep secrets for good reasons, but then we reveal those secrets for equally good reasons. You might choose to reveal a secret that you have if, if it's a burden that you're carrying. You share the secret to lighten the load, or it brings you the help that you need. Or perhaps you share a secret to deepen a connection, build a relationship with someone else. And if we share a secret, we share a special bond. We reveal our secrets because we want someone else to know us, to, to know our hearts. Sometimes we do it to feel important. I know something you don't, but I'm gonna tell you. We need to share our story with others sometimes, including our struggles and our fears and our hopes and our dreams. But also to reveal a secret to someone we do it to someone who will keep your secret, someone whom you trust, someone who you know is for you and can help you if you need help, and someone who will value your secret. And we spoke last week about how God, too, has secrets. And as surprising as that may have sounded, it's true, God does. And sometimes he hides those secrets. But here's the thing, he hides them for you, not from you. He hides secrets for you to keep you engaged with him, to keep you seeking. It encourages you to care about them, to search for them, to find the answers, to learn them, to know them. Perhaps you've never considered that before, but it's perfectly true. And it's extremely clear in scripture that God keeps secrets for us. He has secrets for us. He has secrets that he wants to share with us, secrets about what he is doing in the world. So let's take another look at today's gospel. John the Baptist appeared in the desert. And this is what he proclaimed, that one mightier than I is coming after me. He shares the secret of what he will do through the coming of Christ. And God shares it through the prophet John. And some prophets are great, like John the Baptist. But others are more like you and I. Prophets are simply anybody that God can trust with his secrets. And prophets hear God's secrets so that they can prepare the way for God to act in the world. If you've been baptized, you were baptized a prophet. You are a prophet. You may have never thought of yourself in that way, but you are a prophet. Because scripture tells us that in Amos, surely the Lord does nothing without revealing his secrets to his servants and to his prophets. God acts in the world. But before he acts, he lets his prophets know what he's doing. And he invites us to be a part of his plans. At that first Christmas, God revealed his secrets 
not only to John the Baptist, but to Mary, to Joseph, to Elizabeth, to the wise men, to the shepherds and others. And he did that so that they could be a part of his plan. So today, I want to take a look at how we position ourselves to receive God's secrets, how we can hear God's secrets. To do it, we are obviously looking at this passage from the Gospel of Mark. Now, Mark's Gospel, which, by the way, was the first written, even though we say Matthew first because it was the most popular, Mark's Gospel is the shortest Gospel. And in a way, it is the most action-packed. So there's a great place to start reading the Bible. But uniquely, Mark begins with the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Well, that seems superfluous. Obviously, it's the beginning. But Mark is deliberately invoking the beginning of another book, the book of Genesis, the very beginning of the entire Bible. Remember Genesis 1, in the beginning. Did you know that gospel means good news? And Mark wants to establish as the first thing that, that this book, his book, is all about good news. It's all about the beginning of a new beginning. It's good news about a new creation to renew and restore the one that was damaged in Genesis. A new beginning that is made possible because Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah. The Son of God has come into the world to change and to transform the world. He is the turning point in all of history. Meeting him, coming into relationship with him, changes everything about history, including our history. The secrets of God are always good news. He wants to share with us. It's always about something good that God is going to do. Even the challenging messages that we hear from God lead us at least eventually to good news. Mark continues, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. It was another prophet, the ancient prophet Isaiah, who understood the secret of what God would one day do in Christ. Isaiah, the greatest, the most prolific prophet, was eventually succeeded by John the Baptist, who was the last prophet before the coming of Christ. So it's John's job to make immediate preparation for that coming to make straight his path, to get people's attention so that they could pay attention when at last he came. Go back to Isaiah. Behold, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you. Prepare the way. The reference to a voice in the desert refers to the word of God. What's he talking about? Well, the main insight when it comes to God's secrets is his word. Hearing his secrets begins with his word, which means it begins with scripture. Scripture is the word of God, divinely inspired in his own words. And many of God's secrets are hidden for us, right there in plain sight. As you read scripture, you come to know better God's voice, how he acts, what he thinks. And reading scripture teaches us to hear and to recognize God's voice. And it's not always easy <laughs> because God speaks in this little small voice sometimes. He whispers. Again, a way to keep us engaged, a way to keep us searching, a way to keep us in relationship with him. But think about it. How do you share a secret? You don't shout it out. You whisper it. You share it quietly and discreetly. And the same is true of God. He shares his secrets in the still, small voice in our minds and in our hearts. So to hear God's secrets, we start with scripture. Again, Isaiah. Both Isaiah and John 
talk about preparation. When it comes to learning God's secrets, it's all about planning and preparation. Anything worth doing requires some preparation. So the very, the very best advice, really, is to formulate a plan. There are lots of different plans. Without a plan, whatever it is is probably not going to happen, or at least it's not going to happen consistently. But that's not the only way that you plan and prepare to hear God's secrets. John the Baptist appeared in the desert. Why? At this point, he went out of his way to get away from the rest of his life. John prepared the way for Jesus by going out into the desert. If you want God to reveal his secrets to you, then you usually need to get away from the distractions of the world around you. And that's not easy for us. When I go on a Jesuit silent retreat, I go insane. They tell me I've invented the Jesuit whispering retreat. No phones, no computers, and no talking. And I'm at lunch, having lunch with people that I want to get to know. And I also think everybody can hear me chewing potato chips because it's so quiet. But we need to get away from the distractions of the world. Where do you share a secret? In a discreet location. You reveal it privately. The same is true for us. We need a time, we need a place away from social media and all the rest of the noise in our lives. And that's why John the Baptist appeared in the desert preaching a baptism of repentance. John the Baptist shows another way that we ready ourselves for God's secrets. We repent. Now the word repent for many has negative connotations. It's associated with traditional religious views of sin and judgment and punishment and damnation. But John didn't preach repentance to scare people, but rather to help them, to encourage them. The actual word is a Greek word, repent. It simply means to change your mind. Repent means to turn away from our attention to the world and pay attention to God perhaps to allow God's word to change our minds, to change our lives. Maybe we've been wrong about something. Maybe we've been wrong about someone. To recap, God's secrets will be most often revealed through his word in scripture as we read it. And when he speaks to us, it will likely be in a whisper, but the more that you read scripture, the more that you will recognize his voice. And we need to set ourselves up for success with, with quiet time and a quiet place. Most of all, you need a plan. To actually make it happen, you need a plan. So maybe you read the Gospel of Mark this Advent. Maybe a chapter or a half a chapter a day. God has secrets that he wants to share with you, for you, and for the good of others. You are a prophet. And the first duty of a prophet is to hear from God. And that takes effort. That takes work. And a prophet's work begins there. But it certainly does not end there. Look again at John's message. One mightier than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I've baptized you with water. He'll baptize you in the Holy Spirit. God's secrets to us are always, always ultimately about Christ and for preparing the way for others to come to know him. In a very real sense, God wants you to be John the Baptist in the lives of others. He wants you to prepare the way for others and to get to know him this Christmas. God says that he'll send his prophets before him.
God does nothing without his prophets. And guess what? That means you.